This is a quick video tour of how to get started with Simple Syllabus. The Simple Syllabus is going to be in your Start Here folder. So I've loaded up your course right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on Start Here. And then you'll see that it's not actually here. You can find a little bit of information, but it's pretty basic and pretty minimal um, about getting started with Simple Syllabus there. Um, but to get started with it, the easiest thing to do is to click on the little plus sign that appears when you mouse over um, any area. So I'm just gonna say we're gonna put this at the very top of your Start Here folder. So I'm just gonna click there and we're gonna go down to Content Market. And in Content Market, we are going to click on the little plus sign in the lower right side of the Simple Syllabus tile. So I'm just gonna click right there. And now it's put a placeholder in the uh, Start Here folder for you. You can go ahead and click on that, and that should pull in the, um, the course information that exists in Simple Syllabus for your course. If you had taught previously, um, with it would try to go out and find an instance where you have taught a section of this same course previously, and it would pull that in and start copying, uh, copying that information. But what we can do, since we don't have that, is we can go ahead and import some information for you. I'm going to click on the left side where it says Import, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull in the master course um, syllabus that we started with. And so I'm pulling in the term called Ultra Syllabus. If you had taught in spring or fall, or May semester or some other semester, then you could search your term here. Um, if you had another syllabus you want to look for, then you can pull that up. You can pull up syllabi that are that are yours, but you can also pull up um, other instructors. So if you've never taught the course before, you can get a start from the Ultra Master syllabus that we have, or from the instructor that taught it most recently, or that you know that that you like their content. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the subject here and jump down to history. And then this is a 1301 course. Oops, not 1391, 1301. And then we are going to pull in the um, eight week ultra history master. So again, I'm just looking for the ultra master for history 1301. Um, we have a 16 week version and then we have an eight week version. And so I'm gonna pull in this eight week version. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull in all the information. We can select what we wanna import over here by clicking, so maybe I don't wanna um, have the faculty information come in. It's okay, it's not gonna replace your information um, if you're not listed in the master syllabus. And if Dr. Regalado is not listed in your in your course um, as teaching the class, his content won't populate. I mean, his faculty information won't populate in. But you can turn that off if you're if you're not comfortable bringing that information in. So let's just go ahead and do do not import here. And then we want to go ahead and bring in expectations for engagement, the departmental information, the textbook information, information about the course. I'm going to go ahead and bring in grading, so you can see an example of what his grading looked like. Um, student course participation is something that populates automatically in the template. And I'm going to not import course policies because that also populates in. You can make changes to that to customize them for your course, though. So let me go ahead and pull in our course outline or schedule. I'm not sure which one he used. We have two versions of that here. Um, and then student learning outcomes. We want to make sure that we get those. And most of these are usually populated in when we bring in the course content, but because this syllabus is brand new, um, it's not sure what we want. So it's just going to it's going to assume that we want the the bare minimum. Let's go ahead and get the discipline core statement and then also the course outcomes alignment to program and institutional outcomes. And that's important also. That's something that students probably never look at, but our auditor will definitely look at that. Then we scroll back up to the top, click finalize. It's going to list out everything that it's going to copy in and then we start the import um, and then close the, the syllabus. So now you're ready to go. Your syllabus is here ready for you to edit. Um, right now, um, you're, you can see that there's this kind of a ring around this. It says required here. Um, there's some, some information that's required to be included in here. Um, so in order to submit this, um, we've, it looks like we've got some information that's been pulled in from your profile. Um, I'm not sure what your phone number is. I'm just going to put a dot there just so that there's something there. And then I don't think we have your CV on file. Let me look really quickly. If we don't, I will forward a link to you, <clears throat> excuse me, where we can get that. We keep our, our CVs for all of our faculty in the content collection, and then that way we just provide a link to that information um, 
you can access that by clicking on tools and then going to institution content and then you'll see faculty CV <coughs> listed here. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was working with Dr. Sykes, Dr. Conway earlier. So um, let me jump down to your letter and see if you're in here. Yeah, I don't see you in here. So I'm going to send you a link to the um, syllabus. I mean, sorry, the <laughs> the um, the CV template that we use. And this is just the bare minimum kind of information so that you're not providing information that your students don't need, but it's providing everything that the coordinating board is going to be looking for and that's also required with our Texas Education Code. So let me just go ahead and download that. And I'm gonna grab a link by copying it and then jump back over here. So at this point you would type in CV for And if we had a link to your syllabus here, it's Dr. Sykes, isn't it? I'm sorry. So if we had a link to your syllabus, we could just highlight that. And then it pops up with a toolbar and you can click on insert link. This is actually just the link for the CV template. Um, but that way, you know, that the, the text is already there. So when we get your link, then we can just drop that in um, and replace that. I'm gonna go ahead and click insert here. Um, I like to have it open in a new, a new tab. Um, just because sometimes the uh, simple syllabus doesn't like it when it when it tries to go to a different server. So just go ahead and update that. Um, each one of these areas that has an asterisk is required. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little dot in there about the instructor is required and then preferred method of communication is re required. I'm just going to save that information. And so that should take away the orange link, the orange ring around it. Um, but you will need to go back in and update that information to make it personalized for yourself. Um, we just want to make sure that our department chair information is correct. So that's all right for right now. And we have the textbook information. This is a course that is OER and the textbook lives inside the course. Um, this is the uh, grading information that came from the course that we copied the syllabus from. So if this is not the um, the grading scale or the, the category weights that you'll be using, then you can change those. Um, we re recommend keeping with the grading schema of A is 90 to 100, B is 80 to 89. Um, there's not any policy that's been set about that, but it does help, especially with our dual credit students, um, because they do grade on a 100% scale, where an a, a is 90 to 100. And so just so that it doesn't affect their, their GPAs adversely. Um, there's also course policies that just have some generic policies. You can come in here and change this and customize for your course. Um, and then here is the course outline schedule. Again, I think this came from uh, Dr. Regalado's course from spring. This was an eight week course. And so it just kind of has the course schedule here. There's also a table that you can use if you prefer this format. Um, if, you, if you don't wanna use that format, uh, you can just make the one that you're not using invisible by clicking on the invisible button. I'm going to go ahead and leave them both visible so that you can make the changes to them that you want to. Student learning outcomes populated in from the, um, the master syllabus that we're using. Those come from the Higher Education Coordinating Board. Uh, this one is the Academic Course Guide Manual or ACGM and you'll find links to that on the course checklist and also in the QC2 course if you need that information. Um, discipline course statement is another piece of information that comes in from the coordinating board. Um, that you can find in the, um, the, the content collection. And then um, you can also find it. There's some, some links to that in the QC2 course and on the checklist as well. And then I'm going to follow up with Dr. Regalado to, to um, see what we need to do as far as this information goes tomorrow, because I noticed that this information isn't populated in the other course that I was working on with Dr. Conway. Uh, so now we've got basically all the information in here. I'm just going to go ahead and click the submit button. And then when you're ready to edit this, it's going to work its little magic and attach to your course and everything. Um, you can actually provide a copy or a PDF um, link for your students, but you don't have to. I mean, if you think that it's something that they want to download, then you can do that. But you can come back at any time and click edit the syllabus 
and it's going to open your syllabus back up and then you can go in and edit the sections that you need to. Just one um, quickie little reminder thing here. The ones that have the little pencil icon, you will see that you have to click the pencil to edit them and then there's an option to save or close at the bottom. Um, but not all of them have that. So you can go into this section, for example, and just start making changes to it. And it saves it automatically when you tab out of this area. Let me go ahead and take that because you don't want that information in there. Um, but anytime you update any sections to make sure that it saves, you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and submit. And then that way it will show up as published. Um, the auditor will be able to identify that it's a published syllabus, that it's available to your students. I'm going to just go ahead and close that. Again, you can click the edit button or you can jump in and view other courses. And um, let me just close that back and I'm going to go ahead and unhide this. So this is ready for your students. Again, if you want to add that, that link to the PDF, you can just jump in and click the edit button and then you'll be able to access that. I think you can also click view your simple, your simple dashboard. Um, the simple dashboard will take you to any syllabi that you have through simple syllabus. And let me just go ahead and click that really quickly. This is gonna go to mine because I'm logged in as me. So you won't have quite as many options as I have here, but you'll see a dashboard. You've got a profile that you can edit and you can put your, your headshot, some basic information like your pronouns, your about the instructor information. Um, it doesn't seem to pull in the CV information and, and save that when you um, automatically on your um, on your faculty information. So we do want to make sure that we provide that to you in um, we're, we're going to provide the template to you and then you can just send the template back to us and we will make that a PDF and send you a link for that or update the link in your syllabus. So let me just go ahead and close this out. Oh, sorry. Let me tell you this real quick. The um, URL for Simple Syllabus, if you want to go and look at your dashboard, is going to be odessa.simplesyllabus.com. And the um, username that you would use is your email. And um, your password is going to be the same as your email. It's a single sign-on thing. So you'll you'll sign in with your, your email and your username for most things at Odessa College. Blackboard's a little bit different. The single sign-on doesn't work, but for most everything else it does work. Um, but anyway, that's how you get started with Simple Syllabus. I'm going to go ahead and close that one out. I'm going to close this out because we are um, we're all updated and ready to go. And like I said, when you're ready to update your syllabus, you can just jump in there and click on it and then um, click the blue button up at the top that says edit syllabus. And then that will give you the option to edit it. Once it finishes processing, you'll actually see your syllabus listed here. One quick tip, once you've made changes to it, you might not see those changes right away. Um, I've had to use my refresh button and sometimes I've, I've had to refresh as many as three times before I actually see the changes that I've made in it. But I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of how to get in, how to get started with it, and where you can get some of that information that you need. So I hope that helped. Um, thanks so much. Please reach out to us if you have any problems. Again, this is Julie, and um, Alex and I are usually here from about 7.30 in the morning until 5.30 in the evening, um, Monday through Thursdays. Thanks. Have a great evening. Bye.